Hello and welcome to another tier Thursday. The last two videos we talked about watch tables and force tables and now I would like to take the chance to talk about the difference. Um, if you don't know about watch tables, how to use them and what they are for, please watch the video about watch tables. If you don't know what the force table is, watch the video about force table. That's as simple as it is. Um, I did not talk about the difference between those two, but let's have a look first how they look like. I've got some examples. I have my, let's just look at the force table first. In my force table, I have this LED double point P and the push button P here, which is Q 1.0 double point P and I 1.0 double point P. That's my force table. If you don't know exactly what that means, watch the video about force tables. Then I've got my watch table. Here's my watch table and I have the same push button and LED, but here it is not with this P thingy. So let's put them next to each other. Uh, there's a button here on top. If you didn't know about this, split the editor, which will split the editor into well, same spaces and into, um, yeah, two spaces. And here we have now the watch table on the left side and the uh, force table on the right side. And you see, they look very similar. And as we learned last time, they are also very similar in what you can do with them. You can basically override variables. You can write steady, you can turn things on and off. Therefore, testing, therefore, for maintaining a little bit there. Yeah. What do they actually do? Let's have a look, not inside tier portal, because this is a little bit theory. I am using Photoshop here. I have not used Photoshop um, a lot, so I'm already sorry if I am drawing something incorrectly, but that is as it is. <clears throat> um, so we have watch tables and we have force tables. Most important part is, of course, we have our program and that everything is red. Um, our program, which is OB1, right? I will put in here, we have our OB1. Right? This is our OB1. Whoops. This is, maybe I could make it a little bit more thick. Here. This is our OB1, there is text. Well, no. OB1, right there. So in our OB1, this is basically our whole program. You can imagine this is the whole program. What else do we have before our program is executed? Before we are going through our program, what does the PLC do? The PLC reads the inputs. So what do we have? We have physical inputs and we have the space where we are reading them into. So we have two tables. So let's have a look. We have two tables. I will make them just black and that's okay. We have two tables. First table here. That's before our program. How big did I make it? Doesn't matter. We have this table, which is our so-called PIIT, the process image input table. This is where our input sits. This one example, that could be written in here. One example is I 0, 0.0. This is the example. It is just I 0, 0. If you want to make it 100% correct, we need this percentage sign indicating, hey, this is a direct address. We have I 0, 0. We have uh, more examples, more examples, more examples. We have uh, I... 324.6. So we just have those input output addresses, right? Those are the ones that you are using in your program. This, those are the ones that you are really focusing on when programming. Those are the ones that you find in your, uh, in your watch tables and also in your program. If you're opening a program up here, I have the main. In my main function, we are looking at this percentage sign I, right? Percentage sign input, that is from the PIIT, the process image input table. That's how it's called. Um, process image input table. So let's make this a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller even. Here we go. 
So this is the process image input table. This is what you're using inside your program. So that means obviously what we are using here for our program is the stuff we are using in the watch table. So if you want to test your program, if you want to test your program, override inputs that you're using in your program, you are going to use, of course, the watch tables if you want to test your program, right? That's how it is. That, that's, that's how you test your program, using watch tables. And depending on what you want to do, your program could be really, really, really huge, right? It, there could be thousands of networks. Um, that's why you can make more than one watch table. Every scenario of inputs and outputs could be one watch table. And, oh, I want to test Motor 1. Motor 1 has a single watch table because Motor 1 has also a push button, has a speed, has a torque, and so on and so on. I would put all of those, put them in one watch table, everything that has to do with Motor that I want to test from my program on, I would just toss in there. It's a watch table. So this is program testing. Right? Program testing, watch tables. Yeah, then leads a little bit to the question well if i have those things for um bloop. can i do this i hope i can ah god damn it photoshop and i we are not big friends yet oh wait i just selected the wrong things um which leads to a question why do i have four tables <laughs> Like I can use all variables in my watch table. So why do I have force tables? Watch tables are for testing your program. Right? Watch tables are for testing your program. What is before this program? Where does this input 0.0, .0 actually get the um, signal from? This is where we have something even be whoops, even be what? 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 Sorry. Even before the program, we've got something. God damn it. Sorry, I'm really bad with Photoshop. I'm not bad, but that's new for me. And I also try to learn new things. Why doesn't that move? What? Doesn't matter. I want to push something just in before. So this is what we use in our program. What is before? Those inputs, they have the signal connected to it. So somewhere, somewhere, of course, we do have Oh, uh, that's why. <laughs> somewhere we do have in before our inputs. So there could be a sensor, right? There could be a real physical sensor and that should be black. That's okay. That's okay. Let's take this. Why the flip is that not drawing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there. Why? Sorry. <clears throat> so in before somewhere we have our sensors, right? So sensor. The sensor sends a one or a zero signal or Better to say it actually sends 24 volts or, or zero volt. That's what the sensor gives, right? But the sensor does not directly give the signal to, no. <sighs> Sorry that I'm playing here around with this. Um, it does not give the form directly, the, the signal directly to the program. It does not directly give it to this process image input table. There is, of course, in before the hardware. So we have some hardware here in before, right? We've got this thing. What I will make now? Oh, let's make it green. We've got something in before. Before the sensor, what could we have before the sensor? Sensor goes somewhere, here we go. So what will we have? We have the sensor, then we have something 
Then we have our process image input table, which I am manipulating, which I can manipulate with my watch table. Then we have the program. I can also manipulate the program directly with the watch table. But what could be in between the sensor and our input table? There we have the input peripherals. It's called peripherals. Uh, peripherals which is the I.O. module, or uh, the input module, because we're just talking about inputs here. This is the input module, right? This is the input module. And what does the input module do? It gets 24 volts. So this one here gets 24 volts, the 24 volts from the sensor go into the peripherals. The peripherals transform the 24 volts into a one. This one is stored in our process image input table and then used in the program. So even before storing this input signal in our table, we're working with the peripherals, we're working on the hardware side. So that is now pure hardware side. <clears throat> and this is where we are actually acting if we are using the, what, uh, the, the force table. So I have the force table here and you see it, the force table accesses something with double point P. Hard to see, depending on the resolution that you are watching this, there's something double point P. So it does not access I 1.0 double point, uh, I 1.0 uh, 0 .0, like this one here. It accesses I 1.0 double point P standing for peripherals for the hardware side. So this is where the 24 volts get transferred into zero volts. And this is exactly where the, um, where the, same here. This is exactly where the, come here you, that's okay. Um, this is exactly where the force table comes into the play. It even before processing any of the program, we are manipulating the input signal. So we're really manipulating the IO module itself internally we're telling the io module this input is on which is a little bit different than telling the program yes the variable that uses this input is on in the end for testing it will have a similar result but not exactly the same if you're for example exchanging a sensor if you if you know hey this sensor is broken or uh, you need you definitely always need the sensor to send a one signal you want to force it to a one when you're ex before exchanging it, you force this I, let's say it's I 0.0, .0 you force the peripheral input to a one, then you exchange the sensor, the PSC and the IO module, it will think the input is physically on, the sensor is physically sending the signal, right? That makes a huge difference for troubleshooting, for diagnostics. If you just tell the PSC, hey, the input here, the input variable is on, if the input variable is on, but the peripherals input is off because you disconnect the sensor when troubleshooting, the PLC might think, hey, there's a problem. This doesn't work. This is something really strange. So that's why when you exchange sensors, always try going with the, uh, when you have to do it online, always go through the force table. On the other hand, when testing your program, when, if you only want to test your program, so the internal sites, you can use watch tables because they do not influence the hardware side so much. So you still have diagnostics if the sensor really breaks in that moment and so on and so on. So that's where the gap is. Watch tables, only the software side and um, force tables, only the hardware side. That also counts when we are talking about the outputs. So I could just copy and paste from here, but you have to imagine it um, that we also have an output side, right? We have our program in our program. We actually activate the bits and bytes that we are using in our PIOT, in our process image output table. process image output table. So this is, those are again, the variables that sit, might be a little 
smaller even. Those are the variables that sit in uh, the watch table and that you are using in the program, meaning Q0.0, Q15.3, QB70, QW305. So those are all the outputs. Again, those are flagged. I didn't want to draw it now. I'm going to draw it very quick. <clears throat> uh, those are the outputs and they are, of course, again, marked with percentage sign Q0.0. Zero, zero. Let's take the same example that we had earlier. Q00. Zero, zero, right? This is our process image output. Level. That's what the program actually does. Your program puts the, the, the bits and bytes into this table. It puts it there. So that's what happens internally in the PLC. And then there is the peripherals, the output module. Right? Then there is this output module afterwards. So the peripherals, the output peripherals. And this output peripherals right, transforms this signal from the PLC that we can manipulate with the watch table into a physical signal 24 volts on, 0 volts off. That's what we happen to see in the peripherals. And that turns the motor directly on and directly off. And that's again marked with, of course, our uh, percentage sign. Q00 for output 0.0, .0 double point P. This is happening directly in the peripherals. It transforms this signal internally that we have 0 or 1, transforms it into a peripheral signal, which is 0 volts or 24 volts. That happens in the output module. Right? So just so we have it finished, this happens here in the peripherals. And we also have the PIOT, right? the PIOT. Um, how do I do it? Yeah. The PIOT transforms the signal that we have from our program. Just it doesn't transform it, it's just the internal usage of it. And then the peripherals transform that usage to the real voltage. This voltage, the direct output, the peripherals output, we control again with the force table for testing if this output really works, if the motor really works, if you want to test if the program would work, and if we want to override the program really, we are using the Q00 without the P. The double point P would be stronger, of course, because this is in the end, right? This is in the end, so we are actually overwriting the uh, signal from here. That's the same for the PIIT if we are actually forcing the physical input on. We are forcing input 00 double point P on. That means the physical input is on in the input device. But if we on the same time say in our program or in a watch table input 0, 0.0 off, we can do that with the watch table, we can do that. That would mean the program itself works with the off status. That's how it works. So the one last time, the force table works with the peripherals, with the input and output modules directly. The watch table works with the inputs and outputs we're taking from our PIOT and our PIIT, process image input table, process image output table, basically the variables that we're using. Watch tables, variables, um, force tables, physical outputs. Pretty much, that's the main difference. So I talked now too long already. I'm sorry for this. If this was a little bit confusing, don't forget to leave a comment. Um, I'm sorry that the video might be have been a little bit confusing. Today I have uh, had a lot of stress, so I am sorry uh, for this. I hope you can forgive me. The next video will be higher quality again. Um, if you liked it anyway, leave a like. Do not forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more content every Tuesday and Thursday. Have a nice day and I'll see you around. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs>